Welcome to everyone who's attending this artist talk. And I'd like to thank the incredible team at the Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art here in Scottsdale. I'd like to thank Laura Best and her installation team, Keisha Turley and Jennifer McCabe. I uh, thank you to the Institut Francais and to the Warhol Foundation for supporting this exhibition and to the French Consulate of Los Angeles. I am here at the Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art with London-based French-born Algerian artist Zineb Sidira on the occasion of her first um, solo exhibition, VoiceOver, her first solo exhibition in the United States to be specific. <laughs> She's had many solo exhibitions. There's something very poetic to be exhibiting VoiceOver in the Sonoran Desert as the cigarros are in bloom and as it reflects so much of Zineb Sedira's Algerian culture in the Saharan desert filled with desert sand roses seen here in the exhibition. Zineb Sedira has been mining her relationship to memory, post-coloniality and transnational identity in her artistic practice for over 25 years. Born in Paris in 1963 to Algerian immigrant parents and raised in what is considered the racial other suburbs, the banlieue of Paris, Sedira was on went on to graduate school, went on to graduate from Central St. Martin's College of Art and the Slade School of Art in London, where she was both, she was influenced by Stuart Hall, British Cultural Studies and the Black Arts Movement. Sadira's work conveys the political through the personal, deploying multiple storytelling tactics and voices using photography, video, archival film, and recorded interviews, she unpacks issues such as the silent cultural history of Algeria and her own heritage inscribed within the French colonization of Algeria, her parents' homeland. By questioning the relation between history and aesthetics, trauma and form, Sidira has established herself as a significant voice in the global contemporary art world. She will be the first artist of African descent to represent France at the 2022 Venice Biennial. It was 15 months ago, Zineb, that I met you in real time in Paris at the Jeux de Pomme on the occasion of your exhibition there. And we've been working virtually now ever since then um, to produce this exhibition together, which has been both very exciting and very challenging. Um, we have um, really had to think about how exhibitions are made, how an artistic practice can be um, uh, altered and, um, and reconsidered, but, but remain uh, authentic through all of these voiceovers, I would say, all of these FaceTime moments and these complicated nine hour differences, as well as multiple screens and, and multiple conversations through time and space. So it's truly thrilling to see you today um, and um, to finally be with you in your living room <laughs> in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, and I wanted to start out just to ask you the question, what am I sitting in? Where am I? Because I do, I'm in multiple spaces at one time. Yeah. But first of all, I'd like to say thank you to you, uh, Natasha, for uh, inviting me and being interested in my work because we had a project together well before uh, this one, actually, in New York, around the Baya, uh, fantastic mm -hmm. artist from the... Uh, you know, a modern artist, let's say, a brilliant artist. Yeah, so already we, we worked together at the time. Mm -hmm. We're not able to, to see each other uh, and to even meet each other at the time, apart from a conversation over the phone, if I remember well. And then, um, so it's brilliant to finally do something together. We still haven't, are not able to see, I mean, <laughs> see each other. We did manage to see each other in Paris, of course, 15, uh, 15 months ago. And then thank you to the whole team of Smoka and to Jennifer uh, for the patience, the understanding, 
the, the, that this particular piece you're sitting in um, uh, requires. Uh, it's not such a difficult piece, but it is nevertheless, um, it has been because of the COVID situation and, and the, the delay between uh, UK and, um, uh, and America time-wise. Uh, it has been uh, sometimes quite, uh, in terms of logistic, uh, difficult to organize. But yeah, you sitting in my living room actually is quite weird to see you in it because <laughs> We've got a poster and a painting behind you, which is actually behind me. That's the me. same one, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's Obvious, yeah. Obviously, yours is uh, the wallpaper. Mine is the real thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's it's really interesting. Um, you're sitting in my living room, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's a project. Really, the the whole project. I mean. Uh, here wondering which way to go. It's a project about uh, the Pan-African Festival of Algiers from 1969. And for me, uh, displacing my living room from Brixton in London, it's very important to understand the context where the living room where I live uh, in Brixton in London, uh, how it connects also with this kind of Pan-African idea. And, and the fact that I am a collector, I collect objects, furniture, and a lot of the object and furniture I, I tend to collect, or I, I tend to surround myself with, are set often in the 60s. So there is a kind of a unconscious, uh, or perhaps not so, uh, unconscious now, obsession with this year. I was also born in the 60s, so perhaps. Yeah. As, as was I. I. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is our, our period. Do you feel that um, the, the, what we're sitting in, in a way, is your personal archive? And I think that when, we, when, when the viewer is, is asked, when the visitor from the museum comes to the museum to see this particular installation, which is standing here waiting, standing here waiting, I, you're going to have to help me here. What? Standing here, wondering which way wondering to go. Which way to go, which is what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> which way to go? Um, standing here, feeling which way to go. This is scene three of a four scene installation, and it's called Way of Life. And I was wondering if you could speak to this idea of the archive as both, and that you're constantly mining the archive in all of your work, in your video work, in your installation work. Um, and in your, and certainly in um, several of the pieces that we've sh shown here, and all of the scenes um, in the show. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your archival impulse. Another great Algerian thinker, uh, Jacques Lacan, would talk about archive fever as a as a as an impulse of an identity impulse. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the archive for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I am definitely uh, obsessed or interested um, yeah, by archival material, whether it's photography, film, objects, uh, documents of some sorts. Um, in the past, I used to take a lot of photographs of ruins also, mm -hmm. and, and somehow that connects, I think, with the archives. Um, and I, I love going to those places uh, that kind of, uh, you know, um, houses uh, most of the time amazing uh, type of archives and uh, but usually they're what we call uh, the deaf archive you know the documents were classified and and labeled and 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 restored sometimes and sometimes not uh, depending on the cases and 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 to mix, mix this kind of dead archives or you know or more conventional uh, archives as finding often official uh, buildings or state state archives, uh, I thought it was quite interesting to also uh, add my own archive, my own collection of objects, whether the paintings, objects, um, furniture, um, and books that I've been collecting now since I've been uh, living in England. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and of course, the one that you're sitting, it's, it's a form of archive or collection, but it's a La, uh, you know, living archives rather than the deaf one. So I'm kind of quite interesting in this relationship between the, the deaf of an, oh, you know, the, the deaf documents and, and then the, the, the live ones. Um, 
and, uh, and to be able to sit in a space and actually to consult some of this archive, because really the idea with this living room is to invite uh, the audience to sit, share, mm -hmm. talk, but also to consult, either watching the video, either looking at the books uh, who are on the coffee table, or uh, look at my library uh, and oh. look at the titles of the books of the record because there is a, a, a record vinyl collection also on the shelves. So it's kind of really sharing my personal uh, objects, my oh. personal interest with a wider audience. So the, the autobiographical here is very uh, important in the sense that although I'm, I'm renowned to be an artist who uses a lot of the autobiography in my work, mm -hmm. my mom, my daughter, myself. But this time, I think I'm 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 pushing it further by being much more um, braver. Some mm -hmm. yes, because people are actually sitting and can see, you know, the state of my living room, the walls. They can see my personal objects. They can they can also see in which environment atmosphere yes. I live in and surround myself. You know. Um, and for me, the political and the personal was always so important. And I've been saying that from the beginning of my uh, career, that when you deal with politics, and I mean politics was a big P, for me, it only makes sense when I connect it with the, the person. Personal, because, because we often, you know, we often forget or neglect uh, actually uh, people who have had very roles in politics, but because they were never... Uh, um, they never became kind of big names or they never had a, a, an official position. Mm -hmm. Often they're not regarded as having taken part of some, some kind of, and of course, now I'm talking specifically to Algeria and perhaps the Algerian mm -hmm. war of independence mm -hmm. and, and, and the post-independence whereby, you know, a lot of people fought for this war, but we only talk always about the same kind of few people who became later on uh, ministers, uh, presidents, uh, or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I was always interested in looking at, at the people that we don't talk about, but who right. most probably have far more to say um, than the one who ended up taking you know, power. Uh, and, and we know where that power you know, took Algeria later on. Right, um, and so, I'm sorry. So um, what's interesting is that in the, in the, essay that I write about in the catalog for this exhibition for voiceover, um, it's entitled uh, Liberation Living Room, A Space for Engagement. So you speak to that idea of engaging in your personal archive, which is, of course, linked to a much more political, historical, um, Universal. Uh, universal in many ways. And we talked about the idea of using universal as it, rather, I would say, expansive or transnational and specifically um, the pan-african um, the pan-african festival moment in 1969 and the documentary film the william clown film that um, this exhibition is based on is a very specific moment in um, for african culture and also African American culture. And in my liber liberation living room essay, I really look at your uh, your work for us here at Smoka uh, as the idea as as really mining the, the those moments, those pivotal moments, the Black Panther moments for our particular culture, um, and. And thinking about this activation and kind of militant activation, people would sit in the living rooms, they would create pamphlets, they would create agitprops, they would then they would strategize on how to then go out into the streets and march. Um, the living room really in the 60s, in many ways, was a kind of militant enclave. And I think, uh, for example, Steve McQueen's A Little Axe from this year really shows many moments of, of living room um, engagement, I would say, in the, in the private realm that really immediately translates into the public realm. And so for, for a question for you is this kind of work that you do, do you see it as a, as a form of, of educating and engaging your audience into a further type of um, 
exploration because you your work is so complex and um, provides so many layers of of information whether it's filmic or um, uh, or or through your photo montages and um, and you're as you said you're a collector do you think that this work um, the that this work is somewhat bound to the the moment that we are experiencing today uh, in relation to the political upheaval. It's interesting. I, I, when I when we met in Paris in 2020, it was before this extraordinary year of 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 trauma, really global trauma. And your work speaks so much to that trauma today on the other side of the year. I'm, I'm quite astonished by how fresh and important this work is at this very moment today in May um, 2021. And um, could you speak to that uh, awareness that you have with the countercultural awareness and what you, it's some of your sort of um, Well, I mean, perhaps, desires? We, perhaps we should explain Perhaps we should explain what the why the Pan African Festival in Algiers was uh -huh. set up in 1989. Obviously, it was a moment, a very important moment, uh, you know, uh, where a lot of uh, African countries were decolonizing themselves. Uh, most of them were, uh, apart from a few. And, and the Algiers was chosen as the city that will host uh -huh. uh, and create uh, and invite. Uh, all the African country, but not only because, um, as you know, uh, the Black Panthers were invited, the Palestinians were invited, the Vietnamese were invited, the, the Cubans were invited, yes. the South American, mm -hmm. any countries who was facing and fighting anti-imperialism uh, one way or another were invited. So you had people from the Canary Island fight, fighting, uh, hoping for the independence from Spain. The Portuguese were fighting the yeah. anti-fascists, you know, Portuguese were in Algeria. So it was it was about anti-imperialism, anti-capitalism to a certain yeah. extent too. And the Algiers in 69 become that kind of city of that space where all those people were converging to talk, to share, to discuss, to argue possibly, to yeah. dance, mm -hmm. to sing. Uh, and to watch films because there was a lot of uh, films, but it's but Boumedian, the president of the time, really wanted to focus this uh, festival because he really believed that culture had to be the tool or the weapon to fight colonization. Yeah, that in order for African country, including Algeria, obviously, to go back to its identity to get rid of that colonial era that, you know, obviously dispossessed and, and really damaged, you know, a tradition yeah. and, I, and, and the local identities that you needed to go back to the, that cultural or those traditional moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why there was so much music, dance, theater, uh, uh, literature, exhibition, art exhibitions. Uh, poetry. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Poetry. Yeah, poetry. poetry. And, uh, yeah, and a big symposium also where every representative from every single country, when possible, were um, invited to speak. Uh, and I put my living room in some ways in a very, very, of course, modest and small way was representative of that uh, festival because it's a space, a living room is a space where you meet, where you share mm -hmm. your food, you share your drink, you invite people, you discuss, you might argue even, you might dance, listen to music, and then you have the art and possibly on the wall, on the shelf, right. et, cetera, et cetera. So for me, really the living room, that living room was, and, and the fact that it was always uh, uh, furnished in the 1960s made sense for me yes. to, to, to use it as a, as a yes. 69 space in Algiers. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that I'm Algerian, you know, also. <laughs> and interestingly, the connection with Brixton, because yes, in Brixton in the 50s, 60s, 70s, of course, right. there was a British, 
there was yeah there was a riot but there was a British Black Panthers mm -hmm. they were not as well known as the, the American one but nevertheless they were connecting and there was like and Brixton was the place where they were set where they were uh, living mm -hmm. where the the libraries and the bookshop looking at kind of uh, anti-colonial or British you know anti-imperialism was very much said Brixton was uh, and and you know you mentioned Steve okay. McQueen the, two of his films I think are set uh, in Brixton and okay. to me of yeah, so exactly. all that, all that uh, comes made together. It, yeah, mm -hmm. made it come together. Uh, and yes, you're right, a lot of the living room, the kitchen were spaces where people at the time were, you know, uh, yeah, designing pamphlet or, or, or whatever, you know, whatever was. Uh, but, um, but what's interesting in terms of what we've lived through over the last year and a half, or, you know, year and a bit, and we probably will still go through for a few years, is at the time you could travel very much more easily. You could exactly. hop on a plane, you didn't have so much security uh, uh, at the airport, uh, uh, the custom, I remember at the time between the Algerian and France, there was no custom if you were Algerian, you had an Algerian passport, you didn't need a visa to go to, 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 to France. Right. No, separ no um, separation. Yeah, mm -hmm. There was no real separation, there was, and then obviously, things change, you know, with security, mm -hmm. with terrorism and security. And then furthermore, over the last year, it changed because we can't travel. Right. We can't, we just exactly. can't. My living room has fairly, pretty much sat empty for the last, you know, uh, 12, 13 months. You know, apart from my children, it's been mm -hmm. pretty much me and my living room mm -hmm. and me and children in the living room. So I think it's quite interesting. Um, so yeah, in a way, what I'm perhaps trying to do uh, is to remind people of that moment, of that mm -hmm. 60s moment, which That's wasn't amazing. just, which mm -hmm. wasn't just 69 in Algeria. Obviously, the 60s for me are very much uh, the decade of um, of militantism. You know, where you had uh, so many movements uh, uh, born at the time, whether it was, uh, uh, like we said, the Black Panthers, the uh, anti-Vietnam War movement, uh, yeah. the feminist movement, the anti-nuclear movement. And then, of course, we had May 68, and then we had the Woodstock. And then we, there was oh. so many, so many things happening. There was a kind of a countercultural political consciousness that was that was you know, happening and a solidarity. And that's very key, this word solidarity and, and alliances because, and that's what I'm trying to do with this living room. Is yes. Creating yes. these links, these, these moments uh, that were really there in the 60s. I'm not saying they don't exist anymore now, but I think, you know, it's harder. It's harder to connect with what's happening in Ethiopia or in, uh, because, First of all, we don't always get exactly what's going on there, that there is less communication. We become perhaps a bit more kind of self-centered, of self, you know, obsessed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it was quite interesting with the Black, uh, Black Lives Matters, uh, mm -hmm. because suddenly, you know, I mean, six months or eight months ago when it happened, we saw, suddenly uh, saw that the whole world was connecting to that very particular moment, moment uh, in the US. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, that was very powerful. And then I did think, oh, perhaps it's not totally gone. Perhaps there is still a glimpse or a possibility mm -hmm. of, of this kind of um, uh, political uh, consciousness and solidarity happening again, you know. There's something really utopian about your work and what, um, what we can't see while I'm sitting in the living room are the three other scenes that really animate this idea of celebration, of alliance ship, as you said, of allegiances, of music. We have a whole wall. Can you speak to your scene, um, scenes two and four of this exhibition with okay. regards to yeah. the music and that? moment those types of uh, representations and the photo montages which to me are so key to your practice this layering an archival um, you know constant um uh, co constant uh, development of ideas that are very very visually impactful yeah. Okay. So, well, scene, scene, uh, scene two, uh, which uh, I can't remember the title now. Um, when the world was on fire. When the world was on fire, which is an amazing title. It's an and amazing me, title. 
I, I yeah. got that one. I got that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I forgot it, but uh, yeah. um, was for me really what was the sixties. Yeah, for me the yeah. world was on fire in the sixties, and and in every corners, in every way you were looking at something was happening. You know, something was happening, and. Um, yeah, so I, I decided to go for this idea of the photo montage because I, I was uh, gathering so much archival material from uh, the archives in Algeria, the archives in Paris, the archives in London, etc., cetera, um, around the Pan-African Festival and around that utopical moment, you know, or utopian moment, uh, that uh, I thought the only way to kind of uh, share uh, mm -hmm. this archive because often the Algerian archives are not so easily accessible Available. because you know people don't travel to Algeria or even even if you're in Algeria sometimes they're difficult to access. I was lucky to have total access to them and I thought I want to share what I find uh, yeah. and what I came across and then decided to put them uh, in the photo montage. Uh, so, so make a piece of work, an artwork using those bits of archives mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for me were really interesting. It was another way to to uh, reappropriate myself this history, this memory, um, which usually are locked up in kind of uh, spaces mm -hmm. where you can very difficultly, you know, it's very difficult to access, uh, or, or or very uh, protocolaire way of mm -hmm. accessing them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I thought it's quite uh, nice to actually make a, a piece of work with using old documents or uh, damaged documents. Uh, uh, and also, I mean, a lot of those documents, especially I'm, I'm going to talk about the Algerian archive, often they kind of neglect it and not looked after. Right. They're not. So for me, it was a way to also um, giving them uh, life again, quality and restoring them somehow, you know. Yeah, healing yeah. in yeah. some ways, healing the damaged. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The damaged completely. object. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah and restoring the neglect or re mm -hmm. giving a space to those archives mm -hmm. that have been neglected or mm -hmm. those voices that have been right. neglected, you know, whether they're newspapers, whether they're, they're letters, whether they're photos, you know. Um, and the We Have Come Back archive that you are also exhibiting here, can you speak to the, the musical archive as well? Yes, I mean, the, for me, it was important. You know, I was also trying to follow up a bit the, the, the ethos of the Pan-African Festival around the culture and, and, and trying to show as many elements of culture as possible. So on one hand, you have the photo montage where I like more artworks, like photographs, if you want to call mm -hmm. it that. And then on the other hand, the music was extremely important mm -hmm. in Algeria in 69, because you had amazing African-American uh, artists coming to play, but not only, you had uh, bands, groups from all over Africa uh, coming and, and, and perform really. So I thought music should be very important. So I researched uh, and I uh, bought uh, and found, uh, lucky enough, some original vinyl record that were recording during the Pan-African Festival. Mm -hmm. I also connected with uh, any music that we call, you know, protesting music, you know, uh, African-American, but not only, you know, French, uh, 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 South American. Um, Cuban, uh, yeah, we have Cuban. Yeah, Al Algerian, African, mm -hmm. etc. So I've got my own co collection. So I did a, a mix of my own records with the one that I, uh, I find uh, by, uh, you know, uh, buying, buying, you know, so it's part of the things that I love doing. I love collecting. I love going to eBay or to flea markets yeah. and buying things. So um, that was really interesting for me to carry on doing something I love while I'm making also an artwork. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just to say, and uh, I was, I was asking myself the question, why why was I always attracted by African-American music from the 60s? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it came to me that I remember already when I was 15, living on the high rise estate in Genville in the suburbs of Paris, I was already listening to James Brown and I was like 14, 15 years old exactly. and, and, and uh, George McRae and people like that. And I was mm -hmm. like, what is that? And then I realized that suddenly because at the time in France, when you were, uh, when you are an Algerian person, you the only people you're gonna connect to you with in terms of your experience of racism mm -hmm. uh, 
it's it's with probably the African American, you know. We were exactly. of course, of course, my, mm-hmm. my, my father at home was mm-hmm. listening of Algerian music, mm-hmm. but funny enough, this music that we're not talking about that kind of uh, post colonial right. or anti colonial uh, kind of era, they were more about love, and they were perhaps they had enough about talking about this period. Right. So, 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 so for some reason, in the already when I was 14 and 15, with my L, L, uh, older sister. Uh, we were already listening to that, and very, very strongly, and um, and of course we had a vinyl player, and we used to play vinyls, and uh, and uh, yeah, and it's definitely because of those of the 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 film that, that they were uh, uh, singing, and they were you know, so yeah, so then <laughs> it's not you know, and so I suddenly you think, oh yeah, you know, there is a connection, there is a connection already. Mm-hmm. When I was fourteen, I was listening to all this music, so and suddenly you are making this piece where that music is again relevant, you know. Uh, so yeah, for me it was important then to carry on and to. Uh, mm-hmm. It's interesting because there's that beautiful scene in the in the William Clan um, 1969 documentary, which will be screening uh, all weekend. It will be live streaming on the uh, Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art website, and I invite everyone to see that film because it really dovetails all of these and all of the ideas that we're talking about here. And there's this beautiful scene with Archie Shep to speak to this. So the, the moment of music between African musicians and African-American musicians that is, is very significant in, in the film, which brings me to, um, there is there is a film happening behind me, mise-en-scene, which is the first scene of the four scenes of standing here wondering which way to go. And if you could speak a little bit to that, but also to the fact that I always experience with your work, this idea that I'm, I'm in the, the f- film time, I'm living through a kind of filmic time that you've altered my experience uh, in the galleries and I've entered into the film time. Could you speak to your love of cinema and how you really integrated in all of the components yeah. of this exhibition, but also in all of your work, you're, you're mining, um, you just were recently in Rome working uh, with another film archive, so. Yeah, well, I mean, what, one of the very important uh, aspects of the Pan-African Festival in Algiers was to commission also, the Algerian state commissioned also some filmmakers to make films. And uh, uh, there were uh, filmmakers from Africa or from France or Italy, uh, and all the film obviously were connecting to some kind of uh, anti-colonial um, uh, idea. Uh, that was a bit the idea to commission that type of film. And William Klein, yes, was commissioned uh, and entirely financed mm-hmm. uh, by the Algerian state. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he was asked to make a film around the Pan-African uh, Festival which he did, and it took him two years to edit. I think it came out uh, in a cinema in Algiers in, in 71, uh, and then in Paris uh, just after that in 71 or so, but a few months later. Um, so thinking of this idea of how important cinema was in Algeria in the 60s and 70s, and how the Cinémathèque of Algiers was also created to the first yeah. Cinémathèque in Africa and in the Arab world created. Yeah. It was in Very interesting, yeah. 1965 in, in Algiers. And one of the main ethos of the uh, Cinematic of Algiers was to only, only show films that were related to any kind of uh, anti-colonial uh, or anti-capitalist movement and to give a space to commission and finance, of course, films from filmmakers, especially from Africa who, uh, who couldn't find fun- fundings to do that or uh, to uh, film, filmmakers from France or Italy, for example, who came to Algeria and had a very interesting script that the Algerian state felt was interesting and were commissioning. So hence why the Battle of Algeria was born, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. of course. And, fully yeah. financed, and fully financed by, um, by, by the Algerian state. Mm-hmm. People don't know that, but it was actually- But it was, yeah. And mm-hmm. it was shot in Algiers. Um, but, uh, so this idea of the cinema and, and the cinema as a tool or, or, or mm-hmm. as a weapon uh, to fight 
or to uh, yeah to fight colonization somehow became really interesting to me. So when I was in Algiers doing some research two two years or three years ago, uh, just after leaving, I was at the Cinematheque of Algiers looking at those millions of canisters. Canisters. Of and, and I was just like, I was like so happy to be <laughs> surrounded <laughs> by so much yes. film and so much. Uh, and some films were amazing that I grew up with and some that I discovered that I didn't know of, some Algerian film, but some also non-Algerian film. So it was like being in a, 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 an amazing space for me, you know. Uh, and then as I left, there is a, a street in Algeria or a, an area in Algeria where they do have a brocanteur, you know, where they right. do have those antique like, shops. Like and flea market -y type. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. the shops. Mm -hmm. So I decided to stop there. And the first shop I walk into, there is two canisters of film on Amazing the table. Story. And I uh, and I asked the, the, the shopkeeper, oh, what is that? And he said, oh, uh, one uh, uh, ex-projectionist uh, uh, from the Cinematheque of Algiers uh, gave them to me. Uh, and I said, are they for sale? And he said, yeah, yeah. And I said, can I see what's inside? And I look and open, and inside there was a lot of bits yeah. of film. Some are really damaged, a bit rusty, and others seems to be in bed. And I said, can I buy them? Of course, he says, yeah, yeah, take them. So I buy them. And then I started coming back to London to look and to scan every single piece of film. So beautiful. And I realized that most of all of them were Al actually Algerian films mm. made in the 60s, early 70s. And um, I decided to stitch them all together and recreate my own film. Which is um, right be is is being filmed behind us, and which is absolutely beautiful. And there, what you can't see is that there are uh, cinema chairs as well. Sorry, I interrupted yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I decided to create to re that's why it's called mise en scène. I guess I, re mm -hmm. I, I decided to recreate to make another film from existing yeah. films, bits of that's films. Beautiful. Some are so damaged that you can't see what's in it. I I, I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. You know, but you still kind of can more or less uh, understand that there is perhaps a woman or a child there or, or somebody with a gun or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and I was interested in how also um, the film itself, the pellicle, the, 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 is, or the surface is itself damaged. The, by celluloid, time. the celluloid, yeah. yeah. yeah the celluloid. It's damaged by time. And again, mm -hmm. it goes back to mm -hmm. the type of work mm -hmm. I do in general, right. where I'm trying to go back to yeah. the neglected, to give it back a space right. of visibility. Uh, um, and, uh, and that's what I did. And I think it works Very quite beautiful. well. Um, Very beautiful. Yeah. And Zineb, I think we have a few minutes, but I wanted to ask you, there's so much to talk about. This exhibition is so rich and I, and I keep thinking about new ideas while I'm sitting in your living room and I and I and I have so much I, more that I would like to talk to you about and as you said we started our our um, our curatorial uh, and friendship and relationship uh, at the uh, NYU Gray Art Gallery for the Baya exhibition um, and Baya is currently being shown, having a retrospective in Sharjah, and I was involved in that exhibition as well. And there's also a series of, uh, there's a beautiful exhibition opening in Marseille of Algerian women, contemporary women artists. So this is a moment, and I know you've been working for a long time on trying to bring Algerian women artists to the forefront uh, with your residency program, Aria, obviously in your own work. Um, and, and I wondered how you felt about this particular moment. You've also and the, been selected by France to represent, uh, re represent France at the Venice Biennial and the Pavilion. And I wonder how you feel about all of this. Um, do you, uh, it's my question for you. I know, it's, a, it's a big question. <laughs> big questions. Um, <laughs> you can take it in many different directions. Well, I mean, what, you know, if you think of the French pavilion, you know, I'm the fifth or the fourth, I can't remember. And I think it's the fifth woman to represent France out of more than 100 years. Mm -hmm. That says something. That's and already. I'm sure it's the same for every single pavilion you're going to. I know for the British one, for sure, it's not much better than perhaps mm -hmm. seven or eight. Uh, but out of 120 years or whatever, it's still very little. So 
of course, it's it's very important that France now is trying, you know, because the last artist, La Provost, was also a woman, that perhaps France is um, trying to put, you know, or give a voice to the to the female artist. Uh, obviously, in my case, <laughs> the other new thing is that uh, I'm, like you said in your introduction, I'm uh, the first, you know, African or Algerian or Arab. Uh, artists to be um, representing from them, that is a first. And uh, and I can only applaud that, um, mm -hmm. applaud that, although, you know, um, I think things are never as simple as that, you know, mm -hmm. especially in France, you know, uh, <laughs> in, terms the, yes. in terms of the politics with Algeria. Right. Uh, so there bound to be some kind of um, instrumentalization of some sort, you know, uh, where they're gonna use my pavilion and mean the pavilion to say that perhaps they're not so racist or perhaps they're mm -hmm. much very open towards Algeria mm -hmm. after all. And uh, what he said about, you know, France and Algeria is not true, uh, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, those pavilions are political spaces anyway. So mm -hmm. I think people have to understand that whether it's the British one, the Swedish one, or the American one, they're political. They're political. State, the state uh, pavilion, and when you accept to represent the country, you have also to accept that it's also a form of a pol political act. In mm -hmm. my case, I accepted because I thought I've got so much to say about Algeria and France yeah. Yeah. that I've got to take this opportunity to, um, yes. to, 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 to do the work and to carry on doing the work I've done mm -hmm. uh, up to now. Uh, I don't know if I'm responding to your question. No, but, you are uh, absolutely, yeah. because I think um, it's important for many people that you are um, doing the work that you're doing right now uh, at this time in history. And I think, as we've seen in all the headlines in France over the last month, uh, issues around the, the, the French colonial past in Algeria, in Rwanda, um, yeah. already in our culture here in the US. I mean, obviously we're grappling with deep systemic racism. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so these are all issues that I think that your work, one of the things that I, I love about your work, it's so deeply political in so many ways. And it's, you are, I see you as a documentarian, I see you as an art historian, I see you as a social historian, as an anthropologist. And when you come to this exhibition, you have that, but you also have the ludic, festive, wonderful, musical, colorful, the walls are yellow and green and the, the beautiful 60s furniture and all your visual information is just so um, inviting and playful. And so we can access your work in so many different ways and we can sit down and we can read the you know the 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 serious text by Fra France Fanon on your coffee table, but we can also look over and imagine dancing you know at a wonderful party and at, um, and what I wanted to conclude with I, I was walking through the gallery yesterday with a young person in her twenties, and I said, "How does this work resonate for you?" And she said. Well, Natasha, th these are all the records that we listen to, my friends and I listen to. And this is just like, these are all the things we're thinking about right now. Um, and so I feel like that it's just a very vital moment. I wanted to thank you so much, Zineb, for sticking with us through this uh, installation, but also through you know the many changes and exhibition dates, which all museums, um, and all artists in the global art world and curators have been dealing with this year. So there's something that's very, very specifically moving about opening this work where we're still in confinement, we're still wearing masks, we're still just having soft openings. You can't travel here. It's difficult to travel, as you said, but really it's, it feels that we've really come together with this exhibition and we're bringing um, a, a wonderful audience together. So I'm so grateful to you. And I'm very, um, I'm just, I'm very, very grateful. So thank you, Zineb. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.